NSF Net. NSF Net is a National Science Foundation of United States. So by the late 1970s, or you can say the ending years of 1970s, everyone saw the impact and the power of ARPANET. NSF was also interested. NSF found enormous impact of this ARPANET everywhere. Okay. Now there was a catch here. ARPANET, all the universities or the institutions which are connected to ARPANET, they were only those institutions which has a contract with DOD, Department of Defense. If any other university is there, if any other institution is there, it was not connected with ARPANET. Now there was a problem. So this National Science Foundation, they said, okay, we will make a successor of ARPANET and we will try to include most of the university research groups or whichever university research group which wanted to join this. Late 1980s, I'm talking about. So what they did as an initial stage, they made NSF created a backbone network and they connected six supercomputers centers were there. Supercomputers means those computers which has immense power and they were super in computing. So it was in San Diego, uh, Boulder, Champaign, Pittsburgh, Ithaca, Princeton. And you see these points also, there are certain points I'm showing. And this was the backbone network. Now every supercomputer was provided or was connected to a First ball. First ball is just a computer. Okay. They just gave, gave a fancy name to it. First ball. So every, uh, the six, 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 six supercomputer were given a little brother, you can say. And it was LSI 11 microcomputer. It was called as a first ball. Now these first ball are now connected with 56 kbps lease line and they formed a subnet. Subnet is nothing but a communication network. And they were using the same hardware technology which the ARPANET were using. I hope you got the idea. They, NSF, NSF tried to make a backbone. So the software technology was, uh, was different because now the first ball, it started talking from the beginning in TCP IP. So you can say NSF net was the first TCP IP wide area network. Transmission control protocol, internet protocol, wide area network. NSF uh, funded now because it was a government agency and they wanted the regional networks so that they can access any of the supercomputers, the six points of the backbone, and they can communicate to each other. And this network was finally called as NSFnet. You can say ARPANET was the first internet, NSFnet was the second internet. You can say like that. So it was NSFnet. And it was, this NSFnet was also connected to ARPANET. You know, in the, in the CMU, Carnegie Mellon University, uh, a first ball and IMP was there. And there was a link from this to ARPANET. So NSF net was also connected to ARPANET, right? Now here, because uh, as I said, the whenever the things are good, people will use it. The various uh, regional networks, various universities, which were not the, in the contract of, with the contract of DOD, they came up and they connected to it. So NSF net, when it came, it was a huge success, instantaneous success. So what, uh, because NSF was just a simple, uh, you know, you know a, a government company. So they gave a contract to Merit, Michigan based Merit Consortium. And NS, NSF also encouraged uh, various giants like MCI, IBM, Merit to form a non-profit corporation. And it was then called as ANS, Advanced Networks and Services. And this was the first step of commercialization of the internet, today's internet. Okay. So this big companies, they formed ANS. And in 1990, this ANS, Advanced Networks and Services, it took over the NSF net and it upgraded the 1.5 Mbps line to 45 Mbps. Now ANS net is 45 Mbps. So this ARPANET, NSF net, now ANS net. After five years, this ANS net was sold to America online. But at this time, Everyone was uh, into this. So there were, there, were, there were various companies which were actually offering various uh, IP services, commercial IP uh, services. Now there has to be a transition. The government hand, it has to go to the private hand. So basic idea was to connect all the network, regional network, and they can communicate. For that, National Science Foundation, it awarded the contract to different uh, network operators. And they said, okay, establish a NAP. NAP is network access points. 
So now there is a commercialization going on. Previously it was ANSNet, it was American American Online it took, and now there was these four I am showing you. These are the different network operators. The contract was given, and these operators were Pagbell, Ameritech, MFS, and Sprint. Okay. Now every network operator uh, that wanted to provide the backbone service because the networking part is uh, given to the commercial or the you know private people. So they every network operator that wanted to provide this backbone service to the NSF regional networks, they had to connect to all the NAPs, four of the NAPs. Okay. So what happened? Every private player, the backbone carriers, you can say. They were forced to compete for the regional networks business on the basis of service and price. Every one wanted that this regional connect, uh, network should connect to us. So there was a price, and uh, there was, this was the commercialization actually. And during the 1990s, various other countries also they also built their own networks. Some of them uh, were patterned or based on ARPANET and NSFNET, like the European countries. So I'm talking about uh, different countries. They also did this. For example, Europa Net. You see this picture, Ebon in Europe, and this all started with two Mbps. They upgraded it to thirty-four Mbps lines. And as I as we saw in the United States, here also the network which started with the government uh, ish effort, it was also handed over to the industry. That is the private players. This is network inf infrastructure, because there also it happened. Net net network infrastructure cannot be held by. Uh, Or cannot be handled by easy by a uh, government player. Now here comes Tim Berners-Lee. He was the inventor of WWW. When then WWW came, internet exploded in early 1990s. Everyone was using internet. Initially at that time, it was used for email, for news groups, for remote login, for file transfer. But now the time has changed. Now we have real-time media distribution. The social media, Twitter, Facebook, these are there. Everyone is using it. And apart from that, the main traffic is coming from where? It is coming from Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube. All these are streaming videos platforms.